Hello everyone and welcome back to In the Studio with Ophelia. I am Ophelia and thank you so much for joining me today. Today I thought it would be a good idea to just kind of relax sort of in our journals. So that's what I've got planned for us today. Just an art journal with me. Um, grab your journal, your materials, whatever it is that you wish um, to just kind of relax and play in our journals. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining me and I would love for you to give this video a thumbs up and definitely subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you are um, notified when I upload videos. I do upload here every other Thursday um, at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, for those of you that have been here, I just thank you. I thank you for just hanging out with me, for all of your kindness, for just being here. And so, without any more words from me, let's get our stuff and let's go. I'm just starting out with some matte medium, some gesso, and some collage papers. I'm going to take that matte medium and spread it all around the page. And I usually treat that like um, building a sandwich, I guess, with the matte medium on as a bottom layer, the paper as the peanut butter or the middle layer, and then more matte medium on the top so that none of the papers will stick up later. I don't really pay attention to exactly how I'm gluing things down, rather it be upside down or sideways. I just want to cover this page to just give myself a little more visual interest. Um, I usually will take that brush and use it pretty forcefully, I guess, in gluing things down to make sure that I get the crinkles and such like that out. And I will usually find little bits to just cover the entire surface with some sort of paper. Once I get the surface covered the way that I want, I will then get some gesso and just put a little bit on the page. Since I'm not really interested in completely obliterating what's underneath, I will usually start with my brush a little bit damp so that I can still see what's underneath. And once it's dry, I'm just taking my acrylic paints and I'll, I'll have those ready for later. But for now, I'm just going to add some watercolor to the paper or to the background and I just kind of play around with some blues and pinks to just see where or what it's going to do or where it's all going to take me. I just usually spend this time kind of playing around um, and you know I honestly had no idea of what I was wanting to create. I just knew I wanted to keep it in that blue and pink and dark blue um, <clears throat> color scheme. So I let that dry up and then I get myself some acrylic paint. I'm using titanium white, rose, turquoise, and Prussian blue. And originally I thought once I'd put down the watercolor, that I would have the top of the page kind of pink and then the bottom of the page going more blue. But then you'll notice that sort of changes up here. I go back and forth between using the brush and then my hands to just blend things out a little bit better. Or I guess to then get rid of the brush stroke. And I do apologize that some of this will be out of frame.
So I'm just working between that turquoise and the Payne's Gray back and forth to just get the bottom half of the page covered. And this is where I put more of that pink down to get it to stand out a bit more. Um, spread it all around and blend it out with my fingers. And then this is where I decided to completely take out the pink up top or not completely take it out but I use a, a paper towel to just wipe off the excess so that I would be able to paint over it without waiting for it to dry really so I just get up the extra of that paint that I just put down and this is where I then decide to cover the entire thing with dark paint And then playing around here with the turquoise as well as the Payne's Gray to just get the background the way that I want it. I'm spreading that up, spreading that out around the top and I apologize that it is out of focus. But this is where I also remember that I have those Bratcher tools or the color shapers. So I use those to kind of scrape back in where you can see some of the pink. And then I also just get a regular number two pencil and just kind of scrape away some of the layers of pink. I also decided that I wanted to get something bold on this paper or on this page so I found some tissue paper as well as some acrylic ink and I'm just gonna paint that tissue paper with some black acrylic ink because I wanted to get myself some sort of bold marks on the page without actually going directly on the page so I spent some time painting this paper with I think I used a, just a regular black acrylic ink, and that's the FW. And then, of course, this video is all about changing my mind and going through the process of creating an art journal page. But I painted this piece of paper, and then, you know, it's it's been such a while since I've actually painted on tissue paper that I ended up painting a bunch of it just to use in collage scraps. So I just end up making marks and I guess making bold graphic type marks and then I get some pink to match the background that I'd originally put on just to see what that would add. I did not end up using this tissue paper but I painted a lot of it and um, I love that way that the paper turned out or the background paper that I have on my desk because I'll use that in other collage things as well. But I've got some gesso and the Spratcher tool from the last video and I ended up um, using some of that black acrylic ink to make some bold shapes on the actual journal page. And this is what I'm gonna go with instead of using the tissue paper. I got some red acrylic ink just to add in some more color and I went around my studio and found like this is the top of one of my Lucas paint lids and then just some other random things in the studio to give me a circle shape. I then used a brush, got it a little bit wet and made some splatters.
I then went to my stash of paper because I wanted to find something that I could use for, I really just wanted to have a couple of words on the, pe on the page. So I found this, it's like a blank ledger piece of paper and I've got some gesso and I'm using that Spratter tool because I want to, I guess, take back some of the brown color or the natural color of the paper. Um, but I didn't want to completely erase it. So I'm using this tool to just kind of randomly put the paint down. So I've got that white gesso and then the pink. And what I wanted to make sure of here was I'm just going to, we'll get up that puddle of gesso so I won't sit my journal in it but I'm going to make sure that it's actually going to fit in my journal and I realized here that I didn't even really let it dry first um, so you'll see me cutting it down to just make sure that it's going to fit where I want it and then I'm going to use that black paint to create a bit of a border around the edges. I just wanted to make that piece of paper kind of merry into the journal page. So I used that little bit of border. Once that's all dried up, I'm gonna grab a glue stick to just glue that down. And then I was debating here as to whether I should use, say, a dip pen and a nib for the acrylic ink. And that's when I remembered I have uh, some paint pens. And so I go and grab those and then, um, of course, I have to activate them or get them started. And while that I'm waiting for that, I grabbed my Jerry's Jumbo Jet Black Pencil to outline or grunge around where I put that piece of paper down. Then I grab some other colors of the Posca paint pen. And of course, now I have to wait for them to, I guess, um, start working. You have to kind of push down on them to get the ink to flow. And so I'm just going to use those to do my journaling as well as to just make some random marks around the page. Once I just kind of add some random marks, I think I'm gonna call this guy all done. Finishing up a little bit of journaling, I used a clutch pencil just to go around some of that gray. And that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this art journal with me. And I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.